Audible Crimes presents the Papin Sisters murder. Like and subscribe for audio crime videos. The Papin Sisters, Christine and Leah, were two French maids who were convicted of the brutal murder of their employer's wife and daughter in Le Mans, France in 1933. There is some speculation as to if he he died or not, but based on the facts that I've looked up, um, he was also killed, according to the trial records. The case garnered widespread attention in France is in, and is still considered one of the most infamous crimes in the country's history. Christine Papin was born March 8, 1905 in Le Mans, France. Leah Papin was born September 15th 1911 in Le Mans, France. The sisters' childhood was marked by poverty, abuse, and instability. The sisters were the daughters of Gustave Papin and Clement Sturier. Their parents are both alcoholics and frequently engaged in violent arguments. The parents often left the children to just fend for themselves. The sisters dropped out of school at a very young age to help support the family. And both girls started working as maids when they were just teenagers. There's no available information about Gustav Papin's police record as he was not directly involved in the murders committed by his daughters. However, there are reports that suggest that he was an alcoholic and a violent man who frequently engaged in arguments with his wife, Clement Sturier. And that he was physically and emotionally abusive towards his children and his wife. There's no information about Clement Sturier whatsoever, um, and that's the mother of the Pappen sisters. Um, so when the sisters were five years old, they were sent to live with their aunt and uncle in Nantes. However, their aunt and uncle eventually returned them to their parents, and the family moved very frequently, living in various locations all throughout France. The aunt of the Pappen sisters, Emily Pappen, played a significant role in the sisters' upbringing. Now, there is contradicting stories of Emily saying that that's actually her, their older sister. And then there's also some of that she's the aunt. But what I found um, using the ancestry and all that is it's actually the aunt. They only had two children, and it was... Which I could be wrong. I don't know. But my opinion is I think that's the aunt. Emily was actually the aunt. But it could be the sister. But needless to say, at some point in their lives, the two girls went to Emily. If she is the sister, she's the older sister or she's the aunt. Period. Whichever one still don't really matter. But um, either way... They, at five years old, went to live with Emily Pappen. So, um, and she played a significant role in the sisters' upbringing. But Emily was said to be very strict, a disciplinarian who was known to be very controlling and domineering. Um, according to some reports, Emily was very abusive to the girls and would beat them severely, even for minor things. She reportedly denied them socialization and also education outside of the home. Uh, but I also heard that Emily, if she was the sister, actually went to be a nun in a monastery. So, don't know. That one I'm iffy on. So, the sister's relationship... Uh, between Christine and Leah Pappen was described as close but very tumultuous. tumultuous. There are reports that Christine was the dominant sister and that Leah was more submissive and compliant to her older sister wishes and done what she's told, little sister, big sister row. Some have speculated that Christine's influence on her little sister Leah had a role in what happened in those murders. But there's also a story that Christine did it and Leah didn't. Leah just kind of watched. But according to the facts and the trial stuff, they were both involved. 
Um, they reportedly relied on each other for emotional support, but their relationship was also characterized by intense jealousy and possessiveness. However, despite the complicated relationship, the sisters were known to be very loyal to one another. Um, the Pappen sisters were hired by the Lancelin family in 1926. The family consisted of Renee Lancelin, his wife, Leonie, and their daughter, Genevieve. Renee Lancelin was a retired solicitor who lived in a large house, a three-story house in Le Mans, France. And he was born May 22nd, 1865. Lancelin was known to be a respected m member of the community. And after retiring, he became involved in local politics, even serving as counselor in the town. He is also said to be involved in the Catholic Church, and he was to be a devoted believer. Um, Leoni, the mother, Lancelin was a former governor. Uh, she was a governess who helped raise the daughter, Genevieve, and she was born August 11th, 1868, in the town of Newly Serene, France. She was known to be gentle and caring, uh, and she was well liked by her friends and family. Um, she was devoted to be a devoted Catholic and also had a hand in church and charitable arts. Janine Lancelin was a 21 year old aspiring pianist who recently returned home after studying in Paris. She was known to be shy and reserved young woman. And her parents and their maids, the Pappen sisters, were the only people Gen Genevieve had close contact with outside of her musical studies. So, uh, Genevieve really didn't go out much. That's what I get out of that gift. The Pappen sisters were hired to be live-in maids. Over the years working for the Lancelin family, the sisters became in increasingly isolated and withdrawn from the outside world. Although the sisters didn't speak much about working for the Paffin family, outsiders looking in reported that they may have been deeply unhappy and others reported mistreatment or abuse by the Lancet family. So interviews with Christine and also Leah after the murders reported that they were feeling oppressed and very controlled by the Lancelin family. They claimed that they weren't allowed to leave the house. They also said they weren't, they worked long hours, like 14 hours, and were subjected to physical and verbal abuse. Um, it was also said that the Pappen sisters never even had actual contact with the father of the house, Renee, um, that the girls were sent notes as to what was for dinner and they never really had much contact from the working class to the nobles or however you want to call those. However, some accounts suggest that the sisters' claims of mistreatment may have been exaggerated or distorted by their own psychological issues. It all... It is also worth noting that the Lancelin family was generally well respected in the community and had a reputation for being kind and generous to their employees. So they could have over exaggerated and they could have had some mental disorder that caused any of this. Like paranoid schizophrenia. I mean, it's a different day back then than it is now. We have names for that stuff now. On the evening of February 2nd, 1933, a violent altercation occurred between the sisters and Madame Lancelin, along with her daughter Genevieve. This is where we don't know if it was just the Madame and her daughter, but according to the trial records, it, he died as well. They killed him too, so. But the murders were committed by the maids Christine and Leah Pappen, who were later arrested and confessed to the crime. 
The murders were committed with a hammer and a kitchen knife, both of which were found at the scene of the crime. Renee, the head of the family, suffered the most injuries. He had been stuck multiple times with a hammer and multiple stab wounds in his chest and abdomen. Leonani Lancelin, Renee's wife, also su suffered many in injuries. She had been beaten with a hammer and also had stab wounds, including one to the heart. Genevieve, the couple's daughter, had the least amount of wounds, but it, she was still beaten with a hammer and stabbed with a knife. The bodies of the victims showed evidence of struggle with furniture, other items, everything overturned and broken in the room. After the murders, the sisters reportedly washed themselves, cleaned up the crime scene, and then went to bed like nothing happened. They were discovered the next morning by a tradesman who had come to deliver milk. When there was no answer at the door, he returned. He, I mean, he returned. He w entered the home of the Lancelin family and made the discovery. Uh, the police were immediately called to the scene. Allegedly, the two women were found naked. Naked! Both in the same bed. Clutching each other. And it's a twin-size bed. They're servants. Which has made people speculate as to if the women were sexually intimate with one another, even though they are sisters. The sisters were arrested and then they were interrogated separately. At first they denied any involvement in the murders, but eventually they confessed to the crime, both claiming the other sister took the lead. <coughs> okay, so the trial began August 2nd, 1933. The trial lasted for several days. The trial was held in the courthouse in Le Mans, France. The trial was presided over by three judges. Andre Mornet. Jean Magne and Gabriel Marcel. Forgive me if I'm pronouncing anything wrong. I have a country accent and it all sounds bad. Sorry. The prosecutor, Maurice Barver Carter, argued that the Papin sisters murdered the Lancelin family in a fit of rage and jealousy motiv motivated by their difficult working conditions and mistreatment of the Lancelin family. The prosecution prevented, presented that the hammer and the knife at the trial, and they were the ones to, used to commit the murders as physical evidence of the Papin sisters' guilt. Blood stains were also found on the clothing of both sisters, which the prosecution argued that they were uh, definitely involved in the murders then. Several witnesses testified that they had seen the sisters suspiciously on, suspiciously on the night of the murders. One witness even testified that they saw the sisters leaving the home with blood on their clothing the night of the murders. Which, personally, those witnesses that testified, I wouldn't put a tooth or comb in their hand because people are liars, okay? So let's just go with the evidence here. They had blood on their clothes. That's the evidence, period. Let's not do these testified people. Because people can say all kinds of things after the fact. So the defense attorney was Matre, Matre Ferdinand Ledger argued that the sisters had suffered from a shared delusion or folly deduce which caused them to lose control and commit the murders the defense attorney presented to the court psych psychiatric evaluations of the sisters, which I was not able to find the actual evaluations, which I would have loved to be able to find. That would have been fantastic because I guarantee you these sisters got some mental disorders or PTSD. I mean, it's a thing now. <clears throat> the defense also argued that the sisters have been subjected to years of physical and emotional abuse by the Lanson family, which contributed to their mindset at the time of the murders. The defense also called witnesses in to testify on behalf of them, stating 
that they were treated badly at the hands of the family. Yet again, don't really like hearsay personally. Unless that person was there when the murder happened. But they weren't. The defense then argued that the murders were not premeditated. Which I believe that. I think they snapped. Because they never done anything before that. But were spontaneous act committed in the heat of the moment due to extreme stress and emotional trauma. Good defense, because I actually believe that that's probably what happened. I mean, if someone's coming in your face and hollering at you and... I don't know. I know I would kill nobody, but I, I just... Whew. Don't know. <clears throat> the sisters remained relatively quiet during their trial, only speaking when necessary to answer questions from the judge or their lawyers, so they're very quiet people, obviously. I'm very loud. I'm not quiet, so there's the difference. However, they did reportedly show signs of mental instability during their imprisonment, with Christine in particular exhibiting signs of extreme anxiety and depression. Well... Hmm. I believe it. You do got extreme depression, but killing someone is illegal. You got to pay for it. Period. Overall, the prosecution's case was all based on circumstantial evidence. Yes, that that's exactly how I feel. It, besides the clothing, blood-stained clothing. Um, however, the weight of the evidence was enough to in to find the sisters guilty. I would have found them guilty because of the blood stains on their clothing. They were sentenced to death by guillotine, but their sentences were later commuted to life in prison. <clears throat> After the sisters' conviction for murder, Christine and Leo were both imprisoned in different prisons in France, so they weren't together. Um, at first they were placed in solitary confinement, but eventually they were allowed to socialize with the other prisoners during their time in prison. They received a lot of attention from the public. Many of the people thought that the sisters were driven to kill the Lance and Lynn family, and there were many numerous calls for the sisters' release or for their sentences to be commuted. Um, some suggested that this was a reflection of wider society issues, including mistreatment of hired servants and the harsh working conditions faced by many in the working class. Um, I know that was a big issue because I've read plenty of romance novels and stuff from historical. I mean, they did. They did treat their servants pretty awful. I mean... They didn't get paid good enough. They they had to work so much. Now we've got labor laws and all this. Back then, you didn't have that. But killing's killing, people. Killing is killing. You still killed somebody. What's wrong with you? Even if you have a mental disorder, it's wrong. However, the sisters remained in prison and had little contact with each other during their time behind bars. Christine was known for being withdrawn and difficult to communicate with, while Leah adapted very well with prison life. So, Christine and her depression just obviously got worse and worse and worse. And Leah adapted pretty good with considering what happened. Um, Christine Pappen died in prison May 18, 1937, um, and she was 32 years old. Her death was due to a combination of tuberculosis and malnutrition. According to reports, she refused to eat during the final months of her life. But, I mean, she was sick, so there's times I don't want to eat either when I'm sick. I'm just saying, you ain't got no appetite. You dying of tuberculosis. I never had tuberculosis, but geez, that's got to be awful. Prison off officials struggled to persuade her to take nourishment. 
There also had been reports that Christine was deliberately starved by prison authorities as punishment, or that her death was due to the neglect. Even so, it's very difficult to determine exactly what happened the last months of her life because she could have voluntarily said, I'm not hungry. I'm not eating. I don't feel good. Now we have antibiotics and stuff to make us feel that. Back then, nah. No. Okay, so Leah Pappen died May 24th. Don't know the exact year, but she was 89 years old when she died. She had spent 20 years in prison for her role in the murder. So I'm assuming since she didn't get life, that they did commute her sentence a bit and just basically blamed it on Christine. And so it looks like the government was on Leah's side more and saying, nope, that's it. I just went along with that sister. Um, Cause she got out in 20 years for her role in the murder when she should have stayed there. But she was released from prison in 1941. After her release, she lived a very quiet life, avoiding public. Yeah, I believe it. I wouldn't be going in public either. And rarely ever discussing these murders. Yep, wouldn't do that either. She reportedly worked as a seamstress and lived in many parts of France, including Paris and the Loire Valley. So evidently she kept moving around, probably because once someone recognized her, she was like, oh, get out of Dodge. Get out of Dodge. In Leah's later years, she suffered from dementia and she lived in a nursing home in St. Denis de Gastine. Okay, so there's also a movie based on these two sisters called Murderous Maids. Um, but it's more, I think, about the incestuous part. Because they could have been, you know, nasty sisters. Nasty sisters. Um, but it, I, think, I think it's more on... The, the opposite. It's not based on the facts. So, I mean, if you want an interesting movie, I mean, it was interesting and crazy. But this story always has so many contradicting factors. And plus it being so long ago, it's kind of hard to determine, you know, oh, what's truth, what's facts, what's, you know. So, I just went based on the trial information that I found in the court reports. So I'm basing my facts off of that. And I do know that they died when I said they died. That's. And so this is the facts. But there is counter like the other stories. They're saying like the body's eyes were gouged out. And that somebody, one of them shanked. Their uh, girl parts down there in their thighs and stuff. I don't know if that's true because it ain't in the trial stuff. So I actually don't think it's true. And that it was just kind of exaggerated because of their thinking that it was a bit of more of their, their incestuous relationship. But my thing is what it seems to though according to the trial is that actually the mother came down and was yelling at her because the fuses went out so she couldn't get ready so she was hot and heavy she was mad she's like get this fuse working and iron these clothes that's what she was she was just hot and heavy and mad so i'm thinking they just but it dramatic dramatic let me tell you but End of the day, I'm about to get off here, but end of the day, what these two sisters did was wrong. You don't kill people, period. I don't care what for. <coughs> I don't care. Okay? This ain't a self-defense case. Even if you got hit up for the side with a pitcher, the head with a pitcher, I don't think stabbing somebody and beating them with a hammer to death is defending yourself. You just gotta 
maybe clip, take out their knees so they don't, can't come after you. Now, that's self-defense. But, anyways. Well, that's, that's it for this one. The Packin' Sisters, Murderous and Incestual Maids. Like and subscribe.